Yummy. <clears throat> After the defeat of Togrul in autumn 1203, the only thing that stood between Temujin and total control of Mongolia was a loose coalition of Naiman and the assorted enemies that Temujin had made over the last few decades. On paper, the Naiman tribes would have had a significant military and numerical advantage over Temujin, and had until recently been the most powerful tribe on the steppe. With the death of Inanka Khan in the 1190s, rule of the Naiman was split between his two sons, Tayang Khan and Boyruk, who immediately began fighting each other and Temujin and Togrul had already campaigned against them. The final coalition to combat Temujin was centered around Tayang Khan and his Naiman tribes, but it was beset by infighting. Boyruk Khan refused to join his brother, seeing it as a ploy for him to gain control over all of the Naiman, while Tayang Khan's stepmother slash wife, Gerbesu, and his own son, Kuklug, uh, further split control of the Naiman, as they and the generals argued with Tayang over how to respond to Temujin. In addition, Toktua Beki of the Merkid, who had kidnapped Borte many years ago, and Temujin's relations Altan and Quachar, uh, Karyat and Tartar tribes, is and others who had refused to be absorbed into Temujin's host, as well as the slippery Jamluka, were all present. The Naiman leadership essentially had too many cooks spoiling the soup. And even in the face of Temujin's renewed onslaught, they were still scheming over leadership. Uh, the mix of tribes, both Turkic and Mongolic, had little cohesion unlike Temujin's forces, who he had further consolidated at this time, um, as in late 1203, early 1204, he implemented the celebrated decimal system of the Mongol armies. Um, essentially, every member of the army was put into an Arban, a group of 10 men, 10 of which would make a Jagun, 100 men. Uh, 10 of that would make a Minghan, 1,000 men, and 10 of that would make a two men, 10,000 men. Each group would live and fight together, um, be responsible for supplying their own weapons and armor, um, learning the tactics and the routines. And this command structure was strongly reminiscent of the Roman legions and modern militaries, um, making command much more efficient, and as the commanders of each unit tended to have a considerable degree of autonomy, it made their armies much more flexible than contemporary medieval forces. Uh, the system proved so useful that it would be implemented to the entirety of the Mongol nation after 1206. But as this is a very important component of the Mongol war machine, and a bit complicated to uh, take in at first. We'll go into this and uh, Mongol military structure in more detail in its own video. Well, in May 1204, Temujin began his push west into Naiman territory. Tayang Khan was well aware of Temujin's military prowess. Rather than face the Mongols head on, he wanted to retreat further into Naiman territory to the Altai Mountains, drawing out and tiring Temujin's forces over an extended march and then falling upon them, a version of the false retreat tactic the Mongols loved so much. The secret history of the Mongols has the Mongols one night light five fires for each of their soldiers, uh, causing the Naiman scouts to believe that the Mongols had an even bigger army than they actually did, further encouraging Tayang to avoid confrontation. However, Tayang's son Kuklug and his wife Gerbesu, and the generals hated this idea. They accused Tayan of cowardice, retreating in the face of the Mongols, considered by the Naiman to be a lower tribe that they should have no reason to fear. Uh, as it was still early in the year, the Mongol horses had not yet put their weight back on from the winter months, and Temujin allowed a scout on an especially thin pony with a very worn saddle to be captured um, the Naiman saw this pathetic example as indicative of the entire Mongol force, and Tayang's strategy was thrown out for good. 
The Naaman army marched out to meet Temujin, and after a brief bit of cat and mouse, they met at Mount Naku, or Naku Cliff. The secret history of the Mongols has Jamuka frightening Tayong Khan with stories of Temujin and his forces uh, during the battle itself, causing him to retreat and freak out. But that was probably just Mongol propaganda. Uh, Rashid al-Din has Jamuka actually abandoned the, the Naiman with his troops rather than stay with Tayong. Jamuka's soldiers were mainly Mongols and may not have gotten on too well with uh, the Naiman, a Turkic tribe. While Jamuka may have felt that Tayong's weak command had already doomed the army and figured it was better to flee and live and fight another day. Either way, his stories or his flight helped seal Tayong's fate. Tayong Khan's fought, army fought bravely, but Tayong himself was gravely injured, and during the night, a number of his troops, while trying to flee, fell off of the cliffs. By the next day, Tayong Khan was dead. The Naiman had either fought to their death, fled, or surrendered. While some resistance remained, the battle at the Naku Cliffs destroyed the possibility of the tribes ever overpowering Temujin. Gerbersu was captured and brought into Temujin's harem. Kuklug fled to his uncle Boyruk and would be joined later in the year by Toktua Beki of the Merkid. Um, while Temujin's relations Altan and Kwachar were finally captured and executed, Jamuka himself had fled and remained on the run until early 1206, when his final few supporters betrayed him to Temujin. The rest, having already joined up with him after they found out that rather than executing everyone, Temujin was encouraging them to join up with his forces. Temujin, who always valued loyalty above all else, had the men who betrayed Jamuka executed, and in a dramatic reunion in the secret history of the Mongols, he offered Jamuka a place at his side in the new Mongol nation. Jamuka declined, saying that as there can only be one sun in the sky, there can only be one Khan on the earth, and asked to be killed without bloodshed, a mark of nobility, and let Temujin know that his spirit would watch over him and his descendants until the end of time. Rashid al-Din has Temujin slowly dismember Jamuka over several days. With the death of Jamuka, Temujin had cleared all obstacles to his ascendancy, and in 1206 would proclaim the Yeke Mongol Ulus, the Great Mongol Nation, the Mongol Empire, and over the next few decades, the name of Chinggis Khan would be spread with fire and sword. <laughs>